Okay, so uh, thank you. I'm Laura Ferris, and I am a dermatologist. Uh, my interest is in melanoma early detection. Um, so this is really important because uh, melanoma incidence is rising. So if you look back 20 years ago or 50 years ago, the risk of being diagnosed now with melanoma is much higher than it used to be. Um, and the reason that I think early detection is so important is that it's, in, it's associated with increased survival. So um, if you look at the chance, the probability of, that you're going to survive for 10 years if you're diagnosed with melanoma, if you're diagnosed with melanoma in situ, the absolute thinnest melanoma, essentially 100% of people are still alive. Stage one, uh, about 90% of people are still going to be alive 10 years later. If you have stage four disease, and this, these uh, figures are really sort of before some of the newer therapies that you just heard about, but very few people um, diagnosed with stage four disease at diagnosis are going to be uh, still alive relative to people with early diagnosis. So why is that? Um, this is just sort of the dermatologist perspective of early detection, which is that melanoma starts at the very top of the skin. It's at the surface where we can easily remove it surgically, just in the office. Um, as it uh, stays in place and isn't removed, melanoma gets deeper. It grows um, down into the skin, and if it can become what we call ulcerated. It starts to break through the top of the skin. Um, once it's gone down into the skin, it has access to the lymphatic channels and to little blood vessels, and so it can travel um, most commonly through the lymphatics to your draining lymph nodes and then beyond, uh, or it can just uh, travel you know, through the blood also and metastasize. Um, and then from there, that's when you see, um, you know, the, the more serious uh, problems that you guys have been talking about where we need to use these very advanced treatments because that's when melanoma can spread to the liver, spread to the lungs, the brain. Um, so, you know, this is why I'm very passionate about early detection. I want to be able to find melanoma when it's sitting at the top of the skin, when we can excise it before the horse is out of the barn. Um, so, I'm going to talk a little bit about melanoma screening at UPMC. So I'm a dermatologist. This is a huge part of what I do. Um, we, uh, we don't have the workforce in dermatology to be the screeners of the entire population. I'll talk a little bit um, in my next slide about why my PCP. Um, but we think that this is so important. This requires a collaborative effort to find melanoma early. Um, this is not just the role of dermatologists. Um, this is something that's important in primary care. Um, so what we did is we talked with our big primary care network here at UPMC. Uh, and Dr. Kirkwood, you know, really sort of um, took this on as he's trying to put himself out of business. He wants all these melanomas to be found early. And so he said, why don't we train all these PCPs how to identify melanoma? Let's give them a training module. And then when patients are in to see their primary care doctor, if they're 35 or older, offer them a skin exam as part of their regular physical. Um, and then, you know, we have a lot of sophisticated um, electronic health uh, record uh, features here at UPMC, and so we realized we could really use that to our advantage to help identify who would be eligible to be screened and then help us track who actually was screened. And then we can look at who was diagnosed with melanoma using our cancer registry and the health record. So why my PCP? So most people don't see a dermatologist annually, but many people do see their PCP annually. So simply, they are going to see people who are never going to walk into my office. Um, there are not enough dermatologists to screen everybody. We know that. Um, and the goal is to empower PCPs, and frankly, as far as I'm concerned, the goal is to empower anybody who can detect melanoma. I have a colleague working on something to um, empower hairdressers to find melanoma in the scalp, which is hard to detect. So our goal is everybody should be empowered to find melanoma. And so um, we want our, the PCPs, when they're doing an annual physical, put the patient in a gown, take a look. If they see something suspicious, biopsy it if they're comfortable or send it to us. 
Um, research shows that patients with met with thin melanoma, if you compare them to patients who are diagnosed with advanced or thick melanoma, they're more likely to actually have a PCP and to see that PCP at least once in the year before their diagnosis and to have a physician look at their skin in the year prior to diagnosis. So we know that we have evidence that this is associated with a better outcome. Um, so all the UPMC employed primary care doctors were invited to participate and they took a, a course called Informed that teaches them um, a little bit more about melanoma early detection and um, what looks like, what melanoma looks like and what are the things that might fool you that you think could be but they're not. Um, I will, that would take two hours to go through that whole program. Um, I'm just going to go through sort of some of the important uh, features of melanoma that were covered in there because they're also very important for patients to know. Um, so clinical features of uh, melanoma, we talk about things like the A, B, C, Ds. Um, so here is, uh, here is this, you know, asymmetry. Um, this is two halves of, this, of the lesion don't look the same. B is borders that are irregular, it's not a nice circle. C is color, um, one, two, you know, black, darker than all your other moles, two, three, four colors. Uh, diameter of greater than a pencil eraser. Um, regression, so when you have a mole like that that's black, but then suddenly it's white in the middle. Evolving, and I think this is one of the most important things. If something is changing uh, rapidly, that's something that needs attention. So that's part of getting that history from the patient. And then finally, one that I like is called the ugly duckling. So if you just look at your skin and you say, this is the one thing that looks different than all of the others, um, you know, that's, that oftentimes is a very sensitive sign that that might be melanoma. So we teach about all these things. Um, we also give lots of pictures of melanoma. So all of these things, all of these are melanomas. Um, in this slide. They all look different from each other and part of it is just seeing lots of examples to be better at uh, diagnosing. So how did we do this? Um, this is an example of um, the health record and what you can see here is when you go see your primary care doctor it will, um, based on your sex and your age, um, your, you'll have a list of um, you know health maintenance modules. So if you're a woman over 50, it may say, hey, you're due for a mammogram, or you're due for a colonoscopy, or you're due for a flu shot. Well, we put on there you're due for a full body skin exam if there isn't one in the chart from a year ago. And then the PCP doesn't have to write a long note and do a bunch of paperwork. All they have to do is click, I did it, done. And it goes into your record as we know it's done and we know what date it was done. Um, that means that then we can, um, you know, we can not only identify who needs a skin check, but we can also um, harvest the power of our electronic health record. We can look and say, here are all the people who were uh, screened, here's the date that they were screened. We can go back and figure out um, among people who were screened and not screened who was diagnosed with melanoma and um, what was their age, what was their, um, you know, other risk factors, things like that. So that's what we did. Um, so this is just looking at the first year of data that we had. So if we look at all the people who were eligible, these were people 35 and older who came in and saw a UPMC primary care doctor, there were over 330,000 of them. Of them, over 53,000 were screened and 280,000 were not. Now that may just mean that those people were in there because they were really sick with something else and that wasn't the time to address it. Um, they were, um, more, they were um, fairly little more females but uh, more balanced in terms of men than other screening studies have shown. Um, their age was around 60 years old. Most people uh, were white but actually the breakdown uh, very much matches what we see in our patient population. And then what we did was we looked in everybody who was screened and everybody who was not and said how many melanomas were identified and how thick were they. So what we found was that there were 50 in the people who were screened and 104 in the ones who were not. So remember, most people in this set would have not been screened. And then we looked at how many, what percentage of those were in situ, that very thinnest, basically 100% survival range, and about half of them were in the screened group. Um, but only about a third were in the unscreened 
group. We also looked at how thick they were in millimeters, so many of you are probably very familiar with that. You get a Breslow thickness, and what we found was that the melanomas in the screen patients were thinner than those in the people who hadn't been screened. And then we looked at, you know, what we really worry about is melanomas thicker than a millimeter have the, the, the higher risk of uh, metastasis. And so we looked and said, how many people in the screen group ended up being diagnosed with one of these higher risk ones versus in the unscreened group? And what we found was that the, um, the incidence was much, uh, uh, there were very few cases of thicker melanoma, only three thicker than a millimeter in the screen group, whereas we had over 20 in the unscreened group. Um, so, you know, looking at these, at these numbers, um, basically the risk of having a thin melanoma or the, the chance of having a thin melanoma is much higher if you were screened. Um, the other thing I'm just going to sort of close with is the reason I wanted to show you guys the ABCDs is not just to say this is how we train people, it's actually really important for you to know too. So um, it is recommended that you do skin self-exams, um, you know, look at your own skin, be familiar with what's on your skin, what's normal for you, and then what's, uh, what's uh, new. Because we know that having regular skin self-exams is associated with a decreased risk of having thick melanoma. And we also know that patients uh, find about half of their melanomas. So this is not just something that we are, as physicians, we need to do. Um, it's also something that's really important for um, patients to do. And this was one study that showed that if you had looked at your skin just anywhere between 1 to 11 times a year, so that could be once a month, it could be once a year, um, your chance of having a thick melanoma goes down significantly. So um, when do I need a dermatologist? Uh, we are certainly always here, and we want to be on the front lines in the fight against melanoma. But if you've ever had a melanoma uh, in the past, or if you've had several skin cancers, we consider you very high risk. You probably should be seeing a dermatologist regularly. Um, if you have a strong family history of melanoma, that can be important. Um, some patients have a really tough exam. I mean, you, if you have hundreds of very atypical looking moles, um, you probably want somebody who is used to doing this day in, day out, that's a lot to ask a primary care doctor who's also trying to manage, you know, your blood pressure, your diabetes, everything else that's going on. Um, and then if your primary care doctor finds a suspicious mole, um, they, they may want to refer you, or they may just say, you just are higher risk, I think you need a dermatologist. Um, and then finally, I'm just going to end, because I, I can't not mention the importance of prevention. Um, this was um, a study, you know, people have asked, does sunscreen, how do you know it really works? And so I just always like to um, bring up this study that was done. Um, this was actually years ago. Um, this was uh, two groups. Uh, in Australia with a much higher risk of melanoma in the population. One group was given sunscreen and said, put this on all your exposed skin every day. The other group was told, protect your skin from the sun like you normally would. And then what they did was that, um, was that they just followed those patients and, said, and looked and said, who had melanoma? And so what you can see is that the yellow group was not given sunscreen. And the numbers of melanoma that they get over the years goes up and up. And we see the blue group is the group that did get it. And we see that they do get some melanomas, but that line is lower, meaning there's fewer melanomas that they're developing. Um, so overall, what they found was that the risk of melanoma in the group that was given sunscreen went down by 50%. They also looked at invasive melanomas, again, the ones that are the most likely to spread and kill you, and that risk went down by 73%. And the melanomas that did develop in the people with sunscreen were actually thinner. So this is just great evidence that sunscreen works, in addition to other things like hats and protective clothing. Um, and then finally, um, you know, tanning beds and melanoma, um, you know, tanning beds do uh, increase the, the risk of melanoma by 75%. Um, Pennsylvania law bans tanning by people under 17. You know, please support that. Um, prevention is certainly always better than even early detection and certainly more advanced therapies. So I will end with that and take any questions. Thanks.